we greet you in the love of God and welcome you to the worship service here in Greater St. Paul Baptist Church, 896 South Adams Avenue in the Queen City of the Washita, Camden, Arkansas. Come on now and join us as we go into the worship service. Good morning. Today's scripture comes from Psalms 98, just the first verse. Sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. Amen. Lord in prayer. Father God, we want to thank you, Father God, for this day, Father God. We want to thank you once again, Father God, that you touched us and we felt your touch and our eyes came open to see another day, Father God. We want to say thank you. Father God, we want to thank you that we were able to look around, Father God, open up our eyes and see a new day, Father God. Just continue to be with us on this journey, Father God. We want to thank you that we were able to close ourselves, Father God, able to get up and walk, Father God. We just want to thank you, able to go in our kitchen, Father God, and find food right there, Father God. We just thank you for blessing us, not just this day, but every day, Father God. Just continue to bless the sick, bless the homeless as well, Father God. We want to thank you for traveling great, not just this day, but every day, Father God, on this earthly journey. We just thank you for our families, Father God, that you continue to bless them, Father God. Bless our church home, Father God. But we know this is not our home, but we're just making a way to be in your, in your home, Father God. And spend eternity with you forevermore, Father God. Continue to bless our pastor, Father God. Strengthen him, Father God. Bless our deacons, Father God. Bless everyone, Father God, that believe in your name, Father God, and your son Jesus who died and rose three days later with all power in his hand. And we believe that, Father God. We love you. And your son become the Christ name, I pray. Amen. Praise God from my mouth. Bless and flow. Good morning, church family. It's truly a blessing to be here. I want everybody to say, thank you, Lord. Let's say it all together. Thank you, Lord. And this morning, as we sing to you, we want you to come in, sing along with us. We're singing some hymns that you know and you're familiar with. Clap your hands, stand on your feet, whatever you feel like doing. We're just so grateful to be in the house of the Lord today. All right. Let's all give the Lord a hand clap of praise.
for today are Wednesday night Bible study in Sanctuary and call in from 12 to 1 p.m. Phone number 1605-475-4738. Access code 887-408 in person and online. It's canceled this week, April 27, 2022. The Sunday School Review Review is at 6 to 7 p.m. Sunday school and morning worship. Phone number is 667-770-1484. Access code 844-948. Next Sunday, May 1st, is our annual Colorama. And each person is asked to give $10 to the color of your choice. Kindly use the green envelopes. The colors are green, the Turner Circle, pink, the Ada Roger Circle, purple, the Matron Circle, red, the Charmer Circle, white, Eva Russ Circle, and yellow, the Youth Department. Deacons of the day are Deacon Edwin Keaton, I'm sorry, Deacon Edwin Williams, and Deacon Ben Rock. Ben Holly. Mercy. Our thoughts and prayers are with you. Members on the sick list Sister Bobby Kelly, Sister Willa Thris, Sister Ciola Howard, Sister Kelly Ford, Sister Verinda Turner, Sister Claudia Christopher, Brother Claude Utsi, Sister Carolyn Moore. Brother William Stockdale Jr., Sister Minnie Ford, Brother Carlos Davis, Sister Verna Thelma Plauder, Brother Donna Ray Smith, Sister Opal D. Ford, Sister Mary Smith, Brother Charles Smith, Brother Thomas Butler, and Sister Jeannie Taylor. Remember to reach out to our members in need. A call and a prayer can mean so much, Pastor Frank. Greater St. Paul, it is that time of year for our Dr. I.R. Dunn and Dr. George E. Smith Scholarship Fund event. As we know, both of these men loved children and cared about their education. 
we will have our state rally the third Sunday in May. We are asking for participants to march wearing their state banner. Our college students will appreciate the help as well as the Ada B. Rogers Ministry. Thank you for your help and your donations. The National Crime Victims' Rights Week. Attention pastors and faith-based organizations. The Center for Healing Hearts and Spirits invite you to join us along with our faith-based organizations during National Crime Victims' Rights Week, April 24 through the 30th, 2022. In a plea for the pulpit, the 2022 NCVRW theme is Rights, Access, Equity for All Victims. The theme underscores the importance of helping crime victims find their justice by enforcing victims' rights, expanding access to services, and ensuring equity and inclusion for all. Victims' crimes affect us all. It crosses all racial, gender, denominational, and social economical lines. We are inviting, we are celebrating National Crime Victims' Rights Week with local community-wide observances. We ask that you create awareness in your congregations about the ills of violence available victim services and share ways your congregation can reverse the epidemic of black on black crime. Amen. We have designated April 24, 2022 from 9, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Plea from the pulpit. If your church can participate in this activity, please complete the enclosed participation form and fax it to us at 501-372-2150 by April 22, 2022. Do we have any visitors this morning? Amen. Will you please stand? Would you like to state your name? On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Franklin, Sister Franklin, and Greater St. Paul Congregation, you are so welcome this morning. We hope that you will return. These are our announcements for today. God bless you. Would you come on and give Miss Pure for a very big hand clap of appreciation. As we are thankful for her sharing the announcements. We certainly want to keep those that are on our prayer list lifted up in prayer, um, especially uh, Brother Don Ray Smith. We got information of his journey to Little Rock yesterday, and we're praying for that family, um, as well as Mother Mamie. We're so glad that she's back uh, here today. Amen. All of those um, who may be sick and shed in, we pray together for their strength in the Lord and the healing power of our God. I, um, I'm soliciting your prayers. Uh, you may notice in the bulletin there that today is scheduled, schedules uh, Reverend Michael Smith to preach. I talked with him on last Wednesday to see if he could be available to bring the message today. 
Um, but then I got a call on Thursday that the pastor, my pastor that baptized me over 50 years ago, died Thursday. And so on the first Sunday, he, he'd be laying in state until the weekend of the first Sunday. And, um, and so I've asked Reverend Smith if he would switch Sundays with, uh, with me this week. So it won't be Reverend Smith this morning, um, but he'll be bringing our message on the first Sunday. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Miss Ruby Arnold. Ms. Ruby Arnold. Amen. We we'll certainly keep uh, her family lifted up in our prayers. Again, all those that are on the prayer list, we are thankful for God hearing and answering prayers, like I said, on behalf of Mother Mamie. Also, Sister Thompson having a safe trip uh, to and from to visit your sons. Amen. So we're just thankful that God is still hearing and answering prayers. You have, you may be aware that we have we called a meeting for uh, immediately after service this morning. Uh, we were going to try to give um, an opening to the building so that we could make some decisions. We are getting close to the end of that, the contractor's work there. But after counsel with some of the uh, committee, the contractor's committee, um, I agree with them that it's not wise that we walk through at this time, but wait till the work is closer to the end. Also, one of the things we wanted to address was the covering of the vestibule. As you, you know, in our last meeting, we decided to do that. Uh, but even that, even picking out that covering, we're going to delay. Um, and uh, we have some samples, and we'll get to that a little later on. So um, I'm simply saying that the reason for the meeting or the called meeting does not exist now. We're going to postpone that, and then later we will uh, we will be preparing to celebrate the completion of what we're calling now building number three. And so be prayerful and looking forward to that time, uh, and we will deal with that. Again, I ask for your prayers and uh, your continued uh, lifting up the name of Jesus Christ on behalf of those members of ours who are sick and shed in. Amen. It's time now that we worship God by the presentation of our tithe and offering. We learn in the word of God that it is more blessed to receive, uh, uh, to give than to receive. Amen. <laughs> Help me, Sister Catherine. <laughs> uh, officers are coming now. We pray that you will prepare now to give. Uh, as the announcement has been read, remember the colorama uh, on next week. Make sure that we take care of our financial responsibilities uh, for the fin uh, for the colorama. If you'd be kind to stand where you are, follow the, the direction of the ushers from the rear. Thank you. 
God, God would come there. Thank for his offering. Bless those that gave. Bless those that didn't have, but still desired to give. And as you pray, man, thank God. I say once I was satisfied, oh yeah, and like basement, Lord, to dwell, I didn't know I was a prisoner, oh yeah, in a cell, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh but now I now I'm dwelling oh, yeah. on the first floor oh, yeah. of God's love. Oh, yeah. I'm just here oh, yeah. temporarily, oh, yeah. and I soon shall move above. All right, y'all, listen. In my Father's oh, yeah. house and glory. House and mansion oh, yeah. are prepared, oh, yeah. built by Jesus, oh, yeah. the lonely carpenter oh, yeah. from Galilee. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh but someday, oh, yeah. when this life is over, oh, yeah. I'm gonna join. Heavenly choir, oh yeah, at the gold gate, oh, yeah. sit an angel, we'll be climbing up the golden stairs. I'm going there, yes I am. I'm gonna move in my room. I'm going there, one day I'll move upstairs in my room upstairs, that is why I'm so happy in spite of all my trials and cares, I'm getting ready. Lord, to move upstairs. Oh, I'm going there. Yes, I am. I'm sure going to move in my room. I'm going there. One day I'll move. Upstairs in my room, upstairs, that is why I'm so happy in spite of all life's trials and care, I'm getting ready, Lord, to move upstairs. I'm going there, yes I am, I'm sure going to move in my room, I'm going there, one day I'll move upstairs in my room, upstairs, that is why. I'm so happy, in spite of all 
life's trials and cares. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. One of these old days, it won't be long. You'll look for me, I'll sure be gone. I'm going to heaven, I'll sing and shout. Nobody there going to turn me out. I know my robe. I know my robe. Oh, my robe is going to fit me well. I tried it on. I tried it on. Tried it on. I tried it on, tried it on, I tried it on. You don't believe I've been redeemed. Come on, follow me down to the Jordan stream. Jordan River was chilly and cold. It chilled my body, it didn't bother my soul. Oh, get ready, I'm getting ready. Oh, get ready, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready, Lord, to move upstairs in my room. Up God bless you. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Would you give this choir a hand clap? Uh, amen. Thank you so much for your song service. Miss Cheryl, would you give Cheryl a hand clap of appreciation for stepping in? Thankful to them. Thank God for our officers who have led us in a spirit filled and powerful devotion. Thank you, Reverend Smith, for your spirit, uh, amen, and your commitment to this church. Sister Smith, we thank God for you, to all of the officers of this church, if they're being visiting officers. We, we want to acknowledge and greet you. Thank God for our congregation, those that join us by way of social media, to the technicians. Uh, amen. Thank God for our ushers who labor in our midst. Praise God and thank him for Sister Franklin. And amen. And to all my father's children. Amen. It is a blessing to have another privilege to worship God. As I mentioned, I, I am asking for your prayers. And I only believe that prayer and preaching go together, but I, I believe that prayer and the spiritual power of God go together. Amen. And so we need your prayers as we invite your attention to a passage of scripture recorded in 2 Corinthians mm -hmm. chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Mm -hmm. and amen. And when you find 2 Corinthians chapter 12, if you'd be kind to stand with us as we prepare to share the word of the Lord and what the Spirit of God will have us to say here this morning, let's, let's again pray briefly. Our God and our Father, now humbly we come before your word. God, as we search your scriptures, we pray that you will open our understanding. Yes, Lord. Help us to hear and receive your word. And then be doers of your word and not hearers only. God, we thank you and we make this petition in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Every heart said amen. amen. Here we are, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul writes, it is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. 
such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise, heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory. Yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given me thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measures. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then am I strong. I want to emphasize for this morning, verse 7 again, at least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations that was given me a thorn in the flesh. God bless you. May be seated in the presence of the Lord. I will use for a sermon title, a thought this morning, the testimony in a thorn. Amen. Amen. I want to talk about the testimony in the thorn. I've looked at this passage before and, and I've talked about it. I remember talking about the treasure in the thorn. But today for a few minutes, I, I want to focus on the testimony in the thorn. Uh, I am convinced, my brothers and sisters, not only is there a distinction between the treasure and the testimony, but I believe that the testimony is more, uh, is more advantageous uh -huh. than the treasure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I stumbled when I said that. Mm -hmm. I, what am I thinking? I said, I believe that the testimony right. is more beneficial mm -hmm. than treasure. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I'm saying that, that yes, the testimony mm -hmm. is better Amen. than treasure. Well, let me tell you why I'm saying that. I, I was reading the other day in the book of Acts, chapter 3, where the scene moves to the gate uh, of the temple called Beautiful. And that was Peter and John. And you might recall that they came upon a lame man as they come to go into the temple. And the lame man was begging alms, and Peter looked on him, and he said, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he took his hand and he said, rise up and walk. Amen. Now that's, my brothers and sisters, is why I say that the testimony yes, is more powerful than treasure. Amen. And so Amen. for a few moments this morning, I want to talk about uh, the testimony in the thorn. Uh -huh. Paul has a thorn in his flesh. As Paul comes to the close of 2 Corinthians, he begins to boast, which is quite uncharacteristic of Paul. You see that in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul opens by explaining how humble he is. He, he desires and he operates in humbleness and meekness. But then in chapter 11, there's a shift and Paul begins to boast. Now, he boasts not because of arrogance. He was typically a humble man. 
not uh, boasting because of a particular power or privilege that he possessed, but about his weakness. Paul boasts about him being weak in this uh, 12th chapter. Yeah. Chapter 11, verse 30, Paul says, if I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. What is Paul talking about? He boasts about being beaten. Mm -hmm. He boasts about five times receiving more than 40 stripes. Right. He boasts about three times being beaten with rods. Right. He boasts about being shipwrecked, about vipers biting him. Mm -hmm. He boasts about being cast out, mm -hmm. stoned. Yes, he boasts about being in peril in the water and on land. Yes, he boasts about his experience with hunger mm -hmm. and thirst. Yeah. He boasts about being cold, about mm -hmm. shivering, about being naked. These yeah. are a few of the things that Paul boasts about. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the question comes to mind, why would Paul boast about anything? Right. Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Mm -hmm. Because you see, my brothers and sisters, Paul has come to realize that boasting was what his enemy or his adversaries were using to gather the attention of the people in Corinth. In other words, the false prophets were boasting about their gift. Though they were lying, their boasting garnered the attention of the citizens in Corinth. And so Paul recognized the power of boasting. And so he embraces the idea of boasting, but look what he boasts for. He boasts about his own weakness. I wonder if there anybody here that can look at your life, that can look at what you, where you are in life and recognize that you have some weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And because of your faith in Christ, I wonder if you could just say to yourself, I am weak. I, I have periods. I have times when I'm weak. I, I have seasons in my life where I'm not as strong as I would like to be. But even in my weakness, I have Jesus and I can boast about Jesus. And that's what Paul is doing here. And so in chapter 12, he begins to talk about this divine revelation. He talks about the defense of the revelation. He talks about the difference caused by the revelation. He talks about his doubt in the revelation. And he talks about the details of the revelation all in the first three verses. Paul says, I know a man that was called up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body, I don't know. Whether it was in the spirit, I don't know. But God knows. Yes, Can you hear him boast? And I was called up yes, to the third heaven. The, the, the first heaven is this earthly atmosphere. Yes, this sir. first heaven is between here and the clouds. Yes, that, that is what is considered the first heaven. Yes, the second heaven is beyond the clouds. Mm -hmm. It's the atmosphere of the moon and the stars. You know, the, the, yes, the atmosphere out there. Yes, well, many are trying to get to now that's the second atmosphere yeah. or the second heaven but the third heaven yeah. is in the presence of God yeah. and so what Paul is saying is I know a man that found himself one day in the very presence of God beyond anything that you can experience in the flesh so Paul says I don't even know how I got there Amen. I think that's mighty powerful of Paul not to brag about his earning a trip to the presence of God, but to say, I don't even know how I got there. Amen. But one thing I do know is that I was in the spirit in that time that I was called up to the third heaven. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, John on the Isle of Patmos, right. when John saw Jesus mm -hmm. after being crucified, mm -hmm. glorified, and in the presence of God, Paul, uh, or rather John mm -hmm. on the Isle of Patmos saw the Lord heard from the Lord yes, because he was in the spirit uh -huh. on the Lord's day. Yes, Let me deal with a little significance of that, my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. There are some things that God wants to show you. Right. There are some things that God is willing to show you. Yes, there are some things that God wants you to experience, uh -huh. but you can never experience as long as you limit yourself to being in self. It is only when you get out of self that you can receive the things of God. And there's some blessings, my brothers and sisters, that God is holding in his right hand with your name on it. But you won't get it until you get out of self. That, 
That's good preaching right there. <laughs> Look at me, I'm himself. <laughs> Amen. There are some things that God wants for us, some things that God wants to do with us, but we have to learn to humble ourselves and let the spirit of the living God dwell in our tabernacle that we might reflect the things of God. First and Second Corinthians, my brothers and sisters, are letters filled with the evidence of a pastor's concern mm -hmm. for doctrinal integrity and the spiritual welfare, welfare of a wayward people. You see, Corinth mm -hmm. was a mighty city. It was a powerful city. It was a seacoast city. Mm -hmm. It was a city that goods were shipped to and from regularly. It was a place where travelers would stop by it is a place that had a great significance in the history of the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It is a place where the saints, those who believed in Jesus Christ, received every gift. Mm -hmm. When you read First and Second Corinthians, you'll find that they had every gift known to man mm -hmm. under the anointing of God. Mm -hmm. But rather than use the gift for the glory of God, mm -hmm. they began to use the gifts as a selfish platform. And Paul has to address this waywardness about the people in Corinth to try to get them back, amen, in a right relationship with God. Paul says, I knew a man. He tells what happened to him and not what he made happen. Let me say that again. He tells what happened to him and not what he made happen. I need to say that one more time. He tells of what happened to him and not what he made happen. In other words, my brothers and sisters, sometimes we are so busy bragging about our own self-righteousness that we find ourselves being separated from the power of God because we want to talk about what wonderful things we did rather than testify what great things have happened to us. Paul talks about uh, what happened as he was in the spirit. Mm -hmm. In the text, uh, he describes this thorn mm -hmm. uh, in his flesh. Amen. He refers to it as a messenger of Satan. That word messenger in the Greek is angelos. It's the same word that uh, is used to describe angels. Uh -huh. And so in other words, Paul was saying, I had a thorn in my flesh mm -hmm. that the angel of Satan put in my flesh. He put it there for a purpose. He wanted to cause great suffering in my life. And God allowed it. Why would God let his premier preacher have to deal with this suffering? Again, I'm glad you asked. It's right there in the text. He said, I got the thorn, least I should be exalted above measures because of the revelation I've received. Why did Paul have this thorn? Why did the Lord allow Paul to be inflicted with this thorn in his flesh? Paul says the thorn was there for a purpose. It was to keep me humble. It was, amen. It was to keep me in a position where I dare not begin to brag and boast about how wonderful I was. Every time I could, I can see Paul, and every time he was getting ready to compliment himself, yeah. the devil would stick him in yeah. with that thorn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, why, why would God allow the suffering? Well, because righteous suffering is redemptive. Why, why would God allow Paul and others who were believers in Jesus? Why would God allow them and us mm -hmm. to suffer. I do recall Jesus saying on the sermon, in the Sermon on the Mount, he says, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. Yes. Why would God allow us to suffer? Well, as we are clinging on and holding on to all of the righteousness that we can muster up, when you suffer as you are pursuing righteousness, God would have us to know that it is redemptive. That is a way to get God's blessing. When you're beat up, 
uh, for no fault of your own. Jesus will say you are blessed. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Look what Jesus said. He says, rejoice and be exceeding glad. I know, I know from experience, my brothers and sisters, that it's hard to rejoice Amen. when you're being persecuted. Amen. It's hard to be glad right. when your body is racking with pain. Amen. It's hard to continue to hold high this standard of Christendom when you're being lied on, right. talked about, when you're being cheated and mistreated. It's hard, my brothers and sisters, to hold on to the plow when there are bumps in the road that cause a great deal of difficulty in your life. But listen at the words of Jesus. Jesus said, I know you're suffering, but hold on because there was a blessing in suffering for the cause of right and righteousness. He says, rejoice. You do know what that word means, don't you? Rejoice. He says to the believers, to the faithful, he says, rejoice. Let me put it this way. Do you remember when you first got saved? Do you remember the joy that you had when you realized that your sins would no longer be on your account, but that your sins were wiped clean by the blood of Jesus? Didn't you have some joy? Uh, now Jesus said, when you talk about it, go back and get that joy again. Rejoice. Rejoice and be exceeding glad. I'm almost done, y'all. Amen. Here we are now. Paul, Paul is, a, is a, a very popular and powerful preacher. But he still has problems. Paul, even though he has been privileged to peek over into paradise, he still has problems. Even though he is a church planner and a pontificator and a prognosticator, he still has problems. I wonder if there's anybody here today that can admit that you still have some problems. Yeah, you've been running for the Lord, but you still have problems. You, you come to church every week, you got your makeup on, your hair fixed, you're all dressed up, but you still have problems. Somebody can say today, my job is a good job. I, I make enough money. It seems like everything would be all right. But the truth is, I still, come on, help me preaching here, have problems. I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Anybody just saved today? I'm saved, and I know I'm saved, but I still have problems. I did fast. I did pray. I did turn that thing over to the Lord. But I still, y'all ain't helping me. I still have problems. I have a good family. I have good friends. I have good finances. But I still have problems. I'm chosen. I've been converted. I am committed to the Lord. But I still have problems. I've been justified. I got joy because I got Jesus, but I still have problems. I, I, I see now, my brothers and sisters, that this text is not just about Paul. It's not about Paul and his painful problems. This text is bigger than Paul. It's not about Paul. It is rather about the sufficiency of God's grace. And no matter what your problem is, God is able to turn your thorns into testimonies. I wish I had a witness in here. I said no matter what your situation, God is able to transition your pain into pleasure. God can take your hard times, your bad times, and turn them into his glory. That's what this, that's what this text is about. And so, uh, and so Paul is, would have us to know this morning uh, that he has a testimony. Notice that he has this testimony even though he still has thought. 
He said, I sought the Lord. I prayed three times today that the Lord would take it out. But God wouldn't take it out. He, he, he still, I still got, I have this thorn that's poking me, sticking me, stabbing me. I, I have this thorn and I ask God to help me with the thorn. You know what he said? He said, no, I ain't gonna move it. But don't worry about it because my grace is sufficient. Last night, my brothers and sisters, my wife and granddaughter and I, we went to the Gideon's banquet dinner. Um, and what an honor it was to be there with these brothers who share the Bible. You, you know about the Gideons by now. They put Bibles in hotel rooms, motel rooms. They put Bibles in prisons. They put Bibles in school rooms. And they were, they were there celebrating this region's Gideons. And part of the program was the testimony of a young preacher there. Well, I, he wasn't that young. He was in his late 40s. Uh, but as he began to present his testimony, he began by talking about some really painful things. Mm -hmm. He talks about how that he was conceived um, because his mother and his father was at a drunken party full of drugs and promiscuous behavior. And in the sin of their promiscuity, he was conceived. He talked about how he found out that not long after his mother had conceived, that they went to her father, this young couple that really wasn't a couple, but just found themselves in risky behavior at this drunken party. And so they went to Papa and they said, well, um, we need to borrow some money so that um, so she can get a, an abortion. But the grandfather said, no, no, you're not aborting. Uh, you're not aborting anything. And so this preacher there that was giving the testimony said if it had not been for his grandfather, he would have been aborted. He goes on to talk about how that even though he wasn't aborted and even though he was delivered, it would be a few months later that his mother and father would separate because they were never really together anyway. And as they separated, they both continued in this drunken, drug-using environments, this radical and risky behavior. He talked about in his testimony how that as a little baby boy, his life was, couldn't get on track. And for the first seven years of his life, he had no guidance. He had nobody to look after him. His mother was trying to work to take care of him. The father was gone. He talked about how he grew up with no guidance. He never heard of God or church in his first 13 years. He talked about how he was moved from place to place. Nobody was able to take care of him and how he was free to just do what he wanted when he wanted. Oh, you can imagine this, this testimony on the, power, on the ears of these powerful Gideon men and women. You could, you could imagine how they were feeling inside as he talked about his early teen years of drug use, of violence, of crime, how he would steal and rob, how they, his mother moved him to California from Arkansas to get away from the situation here. And when she got to California, she really had to work then. She worked two jobs. And by that time, he had a little sister, he says but he had no supervision. Mm -hmm. He continued to do what he wanted. At 13 years old, he ran up and down the streets with gangs. I'm trying to repeat the testimony as I remember it now. He talked about how he continued to commit crime with no guidance, no idea of church. And finally, there was a situation where a church bus would come in their poor neighborhood and pick them, him, him up uh, among, along with some other kids. And they would take him to vacation Bible study. And he would look forward to that bus coming because he would be anxious to go to vacation Bible study, not because he wanted to know the Lord, but because they had good food, because they played good games, because he had an opportunity to be with other little children and just have a good time. And he talked about how he went to the vacation Bible school. He went to church, but never considered Christ. He talked about as he moved back to the Arkansas area down in Louisiana, he talked about how that it got so bad for um, 
his mother in California that she shipped him back on a Greyhound bus to his daddy in Arkansas. All right. When he got back to his daddy, his daddy was still being drunk, still being radical, he was still being ungodly, and never said anything about God, didn't know God. And as he continued to give this testimony, he talked about two older gentlemen that in Louisiana, they began to pick him up and take him to church. They were poor like he was poor, and they knew that this poor little boy needed some guidance. And they volunteered themselves. They were Christian men, and they volunteered themselves to take him to church. And he still wasn't interested in the Lord, and he wasn't going to church to learn about the Lord. But there's something that began to happen as he continued to sit under the power of the word of God. And even though he wasn't seeking God, it was something that would happen as he continued to sit under the preaching of the word of God, under the testimonies of the word of God. And to bring the story of his testimony to a close, it got to the place where his mother's father, the grandparent, that had never known him and had never had anything to do with him, he finally, being homeless now at 16 years old, he finally called and asked them, could he come and stay with them? His grandparents were godly people. They were Christians. They were good people. They were not poor people. They were middle class people. And they had a good life. And so as he began to make that plea, he didn't, uh, the grandparents didn't know him, but they knew about him. They knew how raunchy he was. They knew how wreckful uh, he was. They knew how he used drugs and he did all these things. And so rather than just answer, they said, well, give us the week, a week to pray about it. As a result of praying, the grandfather called him back. And this is what the grandfather said to him. They, he said, son, it would be an honor to have you in our house. They reached out to this little boy who knew no God. No God had no godliness about him or nothing. As Christian, uh, an older Christian couple. They opened the doors and they brought him in, not bringing him in, saying, you better do right, and we're going to watch you, and you're going to go to church. They said none of that, but they said it would be an honor to have you in our home. As he began to close his testimony, he talked about uh, trips to retreats. Uh, one of his uncles was a preacher, and he began to, to talk with his uncle. His uncle shared the word of God with him, and as he would share the word of God, Boy began to get curious about who God was. He began to develop an appetite for the word of God. And as these grandparents would take him regularly to church, something would happen as he sat there under the spell of the word of God. I'm sure you know by now that this young man end up, ended up believing in the word of God and receiving Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. He still had problems, yes. He still had problems, but now he had Christ. And as a result of his, this relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, this young man began to blossom in the faith, began to get stronger in his faith in Jesus Christ to the place where God would begin to use him. And as it would happen, he would one day surrender to the call to preach the gospel uh, on his life. So what am I saying? I'm saying that at this banquet, as we sat there sharing and listening um, to this testimony, I could hear Paul preaching the gospel, even with the thorn in his flesh. I could hear how Paul had not always been on the right road, just like this young man Paul had been wicked in his way. But God found a way to straighten out his life and put him on the right road. And the conclusion is that so it must always be with Christ Jesus, that in good times, we need to learn how to praise the Lord. In bad times, we need to give God the glory. Amen. Tell the Lord how grateful you are for what he has done. Tell God that even though I have burdens, I will still bless your name. I'll give you the glory in, even in my grief. 
I'll give you the praise even in my pain. When I'm helpless, I'll shout hallelujah and come to you for help because I know now that you are a very present help in the time of trouble. Though my thorn still sticks me, I'll give your name the praise. Though my thorn still stabs me, I will lift up your name with praise. Though my thorn still stays with me, I'll give you the praise. I will shout hallelujah anyhow. Oh, my brothers and sisters, through suffering, Paul demonstrates what faith in God really looks like. Faith in God does not mean that we're summoned to heaven on a flowery bed of ease. Because we are saved and sanctified and filled doesn't mean that everything will go right in our lives or that we will always do everything right. Being saved by God does not mean uh, that everything is defeated and we never know any losses anymore. Truth be told, regularly, the people of God deal with frustration, fault, and failure. But even though they deal with fault, failure, and frustration, they find in Jesus Christ a help. They come, amen, they come. They come suffering. They come sad. They come even in sickness, shouting hallelujah. Anyhow, yes, I'm talked about but hallelujah, anyhow. Yes, my road gets rough sometimes. But hallelujah, anyhow. Yes, I stumble and I fall down sometimes. But hallelujah, anyhow. Yes, my friends turn their back on me. But hallelujah, anyhow. Because no matter what I'm dealing with, the grace of God is sufficient. For his strength is made perfect in my weakness. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. Will you stand with us? Love. Open door of the church. Come on, give God a great big hand clap of praise. Amen. As we prepare to hear the report from our clerk. Pastor Franklin officers, members, we have Sister Maddie Finks today. She comes for prayer for her, her sister who's uh, in Dallas, Texas, been placed on hospice, and she also seeks prayer for herself. Bless God. Amen. Come on, somebody say amen. 
we're going we're going to prepare prepare to pray for sister fink's sister but I, I want you to see observe what happened she has come primarily to petition for someone else and as she came knowing that she needed prayer she came trusting in the power of prayer amen but it didn't stop there as she came to the altar those that labor with her in the usher ministry no one went and got them no one called them one by one they began to step out and they began to come together I don't know if they knew what she was coming for or not all I could see was that when she came they didn't leave her to come by herself that's what being a Christian is about amen it's knowing that you're not on a team all by yourself it's about knowing that when you need help not only is God a present help but God will touch the heart of other saints and they will come and gather around you that's power my brothers and sisters that is the power of Christian conviction that is the attitude that gets things done and sister thinks I thank God for your coming I thank God for your service and we're going to be praying. We're going to pray not only here this morning, but we're going to continue to pray for your sister in hospice as we pray for you. And we're going to ask you to continue to pray uh, for us. But church, we are living in serious times. And it's time that we recognize the power of things like this, of Christians coming together, of them stepping out and help bear one another's burdens. A Christian willing, uh, amen, to help carry the weight of the load because we are stronger together than we will ever be divided and torn apart. And so now we are thankful. I want to ask you if you'd be kind to stand where you are. I need the old I Our Father, the Father of Abraham, the Father of Isaac, and the Father of Jacob, we come once again, Heavenly Father, seeking your prayers, seeking your strength right now. As we stand before you one more time, and we thank you for laying us down on last night. Even while you watched it was all night long. Death was trying to get in our house. But for early this morning, you told death to leave us alone. And our eyes came open just to view a new day. A day we never seen before. And a day that we will never will see again. But we say thank you right now. As the young lady come for prayer, Lord. For us, sister, Lord, let her know that you God. And you can do all things but fail. Touch right now. I don't know what the problem may be. But you God. And you got all the power in your holy hand right now. Let's just touch all sick beds everywhere. Touch all families everywhere. Realize that we cannot make it without you. Realize that you can do anything but fail. But ask God, let your will, let your will, 
you know I will, but let your will be done. And as we pray, man, thank God. Amen. God bless you. You see it. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. And we will continue to lift that family up in our prayers. Um, as we made mention now that uh, so the meeting is postponed and we will reconvene at some other time. So thankful for the privilege of worship this morning. Pray that something has been done or sung or said um, that blesses your life and that as you have received blessings that you are ready to go down from this holy place to be a blessing. Would you be kind and stand your feet for the benediction? Now the grace of God, the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, and rest, rule, and abide here now and forevermore. Let us all sing together. Amen.